Hello and welcome to Spokane, Washington on the campus of Gonzaga University where it's getting cold and snowy outside, but here in the McCarthy Athletic Center, things are just getting heated up. Tonight, the Gonzaga Bulldogs have a great matchup where they take on the Idaho State Bengals. I'm joined by my partner, Bria Cade. I'm Nazara Wad. Gonzaga coming off a big win at Montana and Missoula. That's right, Gonzaga fought through some foul trouble and nine different players scored baskets in that game. Coach Fortier prides herself on having a deep bench and they showed up in Sunday's win. Well, one of the storylines for tonight's game is, and this season, is the Zags missing Jill Townsend, Jen Wirth, and Lee Attenworth, their production from last year. But the Trong Twins doing a good job of filling in so far. Yeah, that's right. Kaylin leading the team in scoring and three-point shooting as well as steals. Kaylee is second in scoring and has distributed the ball well with all the rotating pieces around her. Both of the sisters shooting exceptionally well, much more efficiently this season than last. This Sunday, the defending national champs, Stanford Cardinals, are going to visit the McCarthy Athletic Center, but the Zags can't overlook the Big Sky defending champions and preseason favorites, just like Estefania Ors. Orr is now in her sixth season in the ISU program. She holds the record for career threes at 206 makes. She was the Big Sky Tournament MVP last season, and she's been double-figure scorer three straight seasons and leads the team with 12 points a game. It's a big matchup here in the McCarthy Athletic Center tonight, and Gonzaga has their hands full. Lineups and tip-off from the kennel coming up right after this. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium.
State here in Spokane, Washington. Beautiful cut and nice pass to finish it off for the Bengals. Sierra Walker now to Kaylee Trong. Kempton trying to post up, now finds Virjoge. Into Kempton, puts up the layup, it's off. Rebounded by Callie Bourne. Beautiful lob throw into the post. Golis trying to throw it towards Tomeka Wickman, but it's off the backboard. Zags pick it up. Here's Walker. Driving baseline. Puts up the layup and is fouled. Stefania Ors picking up her first personal. Foul call number 14 of the Bengals. Stefania Ors. That's your first email number one. If the Zags can get Stefania Ors off the floor here early. Sure, they would be pretty happy with that, getting her into foul trouble. The way to do that would be to do what Sierra just did, keep attacking, keep attacking her, and get those fouls. First free throw's off. Second free throw is good. Zags pressing now, Idaho State, doing a good job to get out of it. Bullis. Funny Ors finds the cutting Smith, kicks it out to Golis. Idaho State might have had a shot in that sequence. Finds Ors for the three-point attempt. Her first shot's off. Ors not going to be afraid to let those three-pointers go. As we said, the all-time leader in threes for Idaho State. 206 made. Also, Dora Golis, the 141 made. Fifth all-time is the Zags. Kempton getting the offensive rebound. Her putback is off. Abby O'Connor gets the second offensive rebound. Drong for three. It's off. Callie Bourne goes diving for that. And Melody Kempton is called for the loose ball foul. Zags been doing a great job grabbing the offensive rebound and giving them second and third chances. However, when it comes to plays that just happened, they need to finish around the room, especially in a game like this. Zags field goal percentage, 45% on the season. Idaho State at 37%. Idaho State, of course, playing against 10th ranked Oregon Ducks. Tough game there. That ball inside to Ors. Is tipped by Kempton, ends up going out of bounds for the Zags. So far on every uh, possession for the Bengals, they have had great looks inside from their backdoor cutters. Something for the Zags to watch out for. Trying Kempton, trying to work the pick and roll. Now Kempton outside, six to shoot. Trong loses it. She's going to have to put one up from deep here. Gets it off, off the back iron. Walker chasing it down, keeps it in, and Abby O'Connor catches for the Zags. Trong trying to catch the Bengals off guard, dumps it inside to Verjoge. There's going to be a foul called on Temecchio Whitman. Strong to inbound, looking for Kempton posting up. Finds Verjoge now on the outside. Kaylee Tron looking to drive right, goes in strong and puts up the two. Way to go strong from the Tron twin, realizing that mismatch and taking advantage of it. There's Orse driving. It's going to be foul called on Abby O'Connor. Force going to inbound here on the near sideline. 
And Nicholas. Tameka Whitman for three. It's off. Rebounded by Kempton. Now here comes Kaylee Trong. Trong looking to penetrate early once again. Gets to the hoop and scores. I say keep it up, Zags. Keep attacking. Post players keep clearing the lane. And that's the game plan for this first quarter. We talked about the red hot Trong twins who were shooting very efficiently this year, but now they're choosing to get to the basket, which is also a pretty efficient way to score. Whitman now at the top of the key for the Bengals to Smith. Drives left. On Verjoge, puts up the free throw line jumper. It's off. Now Trong coming up the other way. Out Sierra Walker. Zag swing around. O'Connor gets to the hoop, drives and scores again. Zags getting to the hoop really easily here in this first quarter. I'm loving the dribble penetration they have going on. Hope they keep the pace. 7-0 run for the Zags. After the Bengals opened it up. Callie Bourne tries to take it to the basket. Her layup is off. Now Trong to Abby O'Connor from the outside now. It's off, rebounded Kempton. And one. Melody Kempton will go to the line, try and complete the three-point play here. Crowd is hype, bench is hype. That's exactly what you want right now. Get your girls on a run right now. And she goes up strong with the ball. Great rebounding from Kempton and all the Zags. Zags early on, eight rebounds, four on, on the offensive glass. The Bengals only two on the defensive glass. We see Melody Kempton and Abby O'Connor check out for Kaylin Trong and Von Ejim. So the Trong twins now on the court together. Colas goes right looking for Otrogi inside. Kaylin Trong bringing the ball up the court. Gets checked there by Callie Bourne. Born will pick up her first. And we'll go to our first media. Zags lead early here, 10 to two against the Idaho State Bengals. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Early on, the Zags out rebounding the Bengals, eight to two. Part of that, Abby O'Connor and Melody Kempton, two offensive rebounds each. Tribute to that, Abby O'Connor with also four rebounds in total. So the Zags using their height advantage, and we saw that Idaho State against Oregon, they really struggled against the height of a really High recruiting, high recruiting school like Oregon. No one on this Idaho State team over 6'3". The freshman, Kayla Sammons, 
was one of the main players they used in that game. She has yet to check in, but she was one of the only players maybe that was not intimidated against that Oregon team because of height. Ejim now inside. Spin move and gets the bucket. Ejim just has the finesse with the basketball. She can score with her left hand, her right hand. I'm ready to see her get hot this game. She's been showing off her post moves early on this season. Well, Trogi driving. That ball from Callie Bourne tipped away by Sierra Walker. It's going to be Bengals ball with 13 left to shoot. Abby O'Connor will check in now as well as Michaela Williams for the Zags. Sierra Walker and Kaylee Tron will get a rest now. Idaho State, a five minute, 40 second scoring drought. On the other hand, the Zags 12 and 0 in the last five minutes. Here's Golis, forced into the corner, guarded by much larger Ejim, puts up the shot with the shot clock counting down and it's gonna be a shot clock violation. Great defense from Ejim, moving her hand, moving her feet, keeping her hands up all over the place, getting it hard for her to see anybody. It's exactly what you want right now. You know, uh, Coach Craig Fortier is definitely happy with that intensity on the defensive end. Definitely. He loves energy from the girls. Ejim inside once again, puts up the reverse layup. It's off. Hollingsworth tries to keep the ball for the Zags, and she will. I give it to this Idaho State team. They're playing hard defense. They're not letting the post just run in there freely and get set. They're fighting back. Finley Garnett and Jordan Sweeney in for the Bengals. Ejim on the inbounds pass. Her layup is off. Rebounded by Smith. Your Sweeney to Orr's. Bengals offense getting some quick passes here. Orr's takes the three, is off once again. Zag's going to inbound in the backcourt. Kaylin Trong to bring it up. Abby O'Connor to Michaela Williams in the Hollingsworth. It's going to be a foul called here on the Bengals. Hollingsworth will go to the line now for to shoot. First free throw is good. Zag shooting 71% from the line this year. Second free throw is good. Press broken here by Finley Garnett. She steps over the line it looked like here, but nothing was called. On Ejim now, poking away from Callie Bourne. She's wide open the, for the fast break layup. And the Zags rolling here against the Idaho State Bengals. 16 to 0 run since Idaho State scored to open the game. They're doing great. They're doing great. They are finding their band on defense, making it hard for them to get open shots and looks, grabbing the rebounds and on the other end. Look, we talked about it already earlier before the game, but the depth of this SAG team, nine players already touching the court, six of them getting points already. So it's it's been a, a very strong performance so far from the depth of this Gonzaga Bulldogs team. As well as their first half defense has been pretty stellar this year too. Earlier this year, Against Central Washington, they only allowed, I think, 10 points in the first half. Definitely. Their defense is a major key to their game. Golis now trapped. Gives it away to Hollingsworth. Looking for Kaylin Trong. Quick pass to Michaela Williams. What a fast break play from the Zags. 
Beautiful defense to offense transition. Kayla Williams active hands again in the backcourt. Callie Bourne has to get it across the timeline. Zags pressing here. Bourne into Golis, kicks it out to Ors. Trying to replicate that quick pass from Kaylin Trong. Doesn't work. Now Abby O'Connor from the corner. Her three-pointer's off. Offensive rebound by E-Jim. Hollingsworth gets her pass tipped away by Finley Garnett. Six to shoot for Kaylin Trong. She'll pull up from the top of the key. It's off. Rebound again by Ejim. Her second of this possession puts up the free throw line jumper. It's good. I am loving the Zags' energy right now. Loving it. Defense, they're all over it. Going for the second and third rebounds, giving them chance after chance. And this is why they have this lead right now. Garnett driving to the left. It's for Callie Bourne, her jumper's off. It's gonna be a loose, fall, loose ball foul called on Ellie Smith. Melody Kempton, as well as Bree Salenbine will check in for the Zags. It's gonna be the freshman Kayla Sammons for the Bengals, as well as Tomeka Whitman. Tomeka Whitman and Melody Kempton there as they're getting ready to get checked in. We're just chatting it up at the scoring table. Kempton from Post Falls, Idaho. And uh, Whitman from Spokane Valley here, Central Valley High School, just 18 minutes away from the McCarthy Athletic Center. Kind of switching allegiances. Golis. Guarded by Williams. Salenbein will actually have to wait to come in. She's checking in for Abby O'Connor. As Golis puts up the free throw line jumper to end the Bengals scoring drought. Galen Trong now gonna hold for the last shot of the quarter here. Zags. Putting on an offensive and defensive clinic. 21 points already in this first quarter. Ejim inside, drives to the left, looks for Kempton, puts up the layup. She's, it's good and she's fouled. If you are in this crowd right now, you are smiling, you're clapping, you are loving that this is your team. Salenbine checking in now for Abby O'Connor. But it's been great basketball from the Zags. Good passing and suffocating defense on the other end of the floor. Kempton's free throw. In and out. Rebounded almost by Salenbein. Tries to get the deflection off Callie Bourne. It stays with the Bengals. They're going to have 2.9 seconds to advance this. Dora Golis puts up the half court shot off the backboard. And off the rim and out. Zags at the end of the first quarter, leading 23 to 24. Lisa Fortier has to be happy with their performance in the first quarter. We'll be back for the second quarter on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Entering the second quarter for the Zags. Sierra Walker puts up the three from the corner. Rebound pulled in by Montana Old Trogi. Dora Golas. Now Bengals swinging it around. Old Trogi puts up the three, rebounded by Virjoge. Bree Salambai now. Trong. Zags. Continue to pass it around for Joge. Free throw line jumper is off. Golis, quick three. And she's been the leading scorer so far for the Bengals team. Five points for her. Golis is, is a solid player for the Bengals, so I'm pretty sure her coach is happy that she's picking it up in hopes that the rest of the players pick up off her energy. 142nd three-pointer made for her. Fifth all-time in Bengal school history. A grad student out of Croatia. Oars thought about the three. Finds Whitman now. Sierra Walker in her face. Golis now with eight to shoot. Her pass inside is tipped away by Kaylin Trong. Rebounded or brought in by Salambine. Now back out to Trong. Walker thought about the three to Kempton now. Salambine open on the opposite corner. It's off, but she's going to be called for a travel before that. The turnover for the Zags. Kaylee Trong now coming in for Kaylin Trong. Bengals get it across the timeline, finding Whitman. Here's Bourne. Otrogi. Golis. Continue to work it inside. Kick it out for a three. Bengals get the rebound. Work it inside, back to Otrogi, and her layup is good. That's what the Bengals need right now. They need to get their offensive rebounds and get themselves second chances to put themselves back in the game. F Coach Fortier can't be happy with the first few minutes of this second quarter here. Seven points conceded already. Five zags up 23 to nine. You're watching WCC Network on Stadium. Dora Golis lighting it up early in the second quarter for the Bengals. Season high this season, the first two games is five points. Her already at five points now. Tonight also doing a good job of distributing this season for the Bengals as their main point guard. We've seen her bring it up the court, initiating a lot of that quick passing on the Bengals. Offensive side of the ball, and now Orr's Poking it away from Abby O'Connor. It's going to stay with the Zags. 17 seconds now on the shot clock. 
With his eggs reset, Abby O'Connor to Walker. Dribbles left. O'Connor, four to shoot. Puts up the baseline jumper and she's fouled by Whitman. Whitman's second personal. Abby O'Connor is going to go to the line. Idaho State really picking up their defense in the second quarter here. The Zags have not been able to get an easy shot. It's like the intensity of the Zags defense has transitioned over to the Bengals defense this quarter. O'Connor's second free throw is off. It's a long deflection off the rim and a jump ball as O'Connor gets in on that loose ball. Possession arrow to the Bengals. Zags pressing now. DJ O'Connor and Walker in the backcourt. Good break here from the Bengals, but Abby O'Connor active defending. Pokes it away and gets the fast break layup. Zags have great man defense. They shoot the gaps. They stay all over their man. They trap well. It's going to be really difficult for teams to break their press. Ellie Smith. Callie Bourne. Started by Ejim. Into Ors and her layup is good. Or is playing with such poise, knowing when to take the shot or when, when she has the mismatch to go in. Her first bucket there, but she's only attempted three threes. Well, she's been pretty open, so expect her to continue to take those. Sarah Walker now inside with six to shoot. Finds Ejin into Kempton. That pass just a little bit too far away from Kempton, who's trying to Bully in on the post there. Bengals ball. You have to give it to the Bengals defense down low. No matter who you are down there or who is down there for them, whether it's a guard, they are fighting just as hard to make sure that any Zag player that cuts in that paint does not get an easy touch. Zag's coaching staff right now trying to think over what happened between that first and second quarter. For the momentum to change so much. The momentum was... Dora coming in, hitting some shots at the end of the quarter for the Bengals, and then coming back from the second, hitting that three. Oh, that's right. Well, Trogi runs basically on the line of the key and then finds herself back on the block for the layup there off the inbound. Walker now on the perimeter. Gets a screen from Kempton. To O'Connor. Going right. Getting down low. It's poked away. Going to stay with the Zags. Nine to shoot. Kayla Williams will check in now for Sierra Walker. Finley Garnett, a senior out of Huntington Beach, California, will check in for Callie Bourne. Inbounds to Ejim, looking for Melody Kempton on the high-low. Then Orr's quarterback pass up to Otrogi. Loses the ball. It's going to be Gonzaga ball on the other end of the court, but what a pass from Orr's. <laughs> what a pass, yes. Ivana Murillo. The transfer out of San Diego State, redshirt junior. Six foot one, so the Bengals trying to get some more height, maybe on the court now. Abby O'Connor to Williams. E. Jim. Zags finding Ejim once again down low and puts the bucket in. Zags need to maybe get back to 
driving into the lane as they did in that first quarter. Here's Garnett to Murillo. Otrogi falls in the key, gets it now outside. Eight to shoot, looking for Murillo. Overshot, it's going to be Zag's ball. Kaylee Trong now out to Kempton. Zag's offensive plan is pretty getting pretty clear here. It's just swinging it around the outside, looking for the opening to find Ejim in the low post. If that doesn't work out. Ejim popping out to that corner of the free throw line and looking for Kempton on the low post. Now both Trong twins on the court, so a bit more shooting. Golis as well as Callie Bourne will come in for the Bengals. Trogi and Garnett off the court. Inbounds play to Kempton. Down low kicks it out to Kaylee Trong. We've seen that play work a couple times for the Zags so far this season. Didn't drop this time, but they can knock the shots down. And typically, Kaylee Trong has found herself pretty wide open as well. That time had a hand in her face. Trogi. Her pass tipped away by Michaela Williams. Ors probing in the backcourt. Kaylin Trong still brings it in. Down low to Ejim on Callie Bourne. Puts up the fadeaway. It's off. Bourne penetrating, kicks it out to Ultrogi. Off the back iron, rebounded by Kempton. Now Kaylee Trong the other way. Michaela Williams, pump fake, takes a step in and the long two is, goes down. Michaela coming in strong, getting that steal down low in the last possession and now making a shot for the Zags. Definitely helping on the offense and defensive side. Bengals with three turnovers in the last 240 of this match. Gonzaga starting to turn it around in the second quarter. Golis on the perimeter now. And the swing of momentum a little bit in the Zags way, as we were predicting in that first quarter is when Golis came out. She's back on the court now. Mario's gonna check out. Kelly Bourne back in for the Bengals. Here's Golis averaging 4.5 assists on the inbounds to Ellie Smith, back to Golis. Bengals, good passing. That time it's off. Michaela Williams brings it in. Almost a double dribble in the backcourt. Ejim. Kaylee gets inside, finds Ejim. Her shot from a few feet out is good. Timeout, Idaho State. Gonzaga turning around now nine points for each team in this second quarter. What have you liked from the Zags in these last few minutes after Idaho State had a good start to the second quarter? Second quarter, I got to say, I like how they're trying. They're knowing that their offensive plan is to get down into the paint. Most of their points have came from the paint. So that is the plan of attack, and that's what they need to stick to, just continue to be strong. 24 of Gonzaga's points so far in the paint. 16 of the points also coming off the bench. Only eight points in the paint for the Bengals and four points off the bench. So Zags taking advantage of those strengths that they have. Golis now for Idaho State. Into Ors, guarded by Williams. Ors down low, gets the layup. Oars predicted her to have a good three-point shooting night. So far, 0 for 3 from 3 and 2 for 2 from two-point range. 
Kaylin Trong. Ooh, behind the back, crossover, step back, three! Kaylin Trong! Hocus Pocus! That was just beautiful as her teammates fall to the floor over there. Oars now with the three. That one's actually going to be a two-pointer from the top of the key. So long two for Oars. She's starting to pick up some steam here. I'm loving the pace of the game right now. One, one girl makes the shot. The other team says, I, hey, I can make a shot too. We're in for a high-scoring game tonight. 50 seconds left in this second quarter. Here's Salenbein. Drives to the right. Stopped by Otrogi. Ejim now at the free throw line. Her jumper is off. Otrogi brings in the rebound. 12 second difference between game and shot clock. Here's Dora Golis into Ellie Smith. Her fadeaway jumper is off. Still milliseconds between game and shot clock, but this is probably going to be the last possession here of the first half. Zags dominant in the first quarter. Idaho State pulling it back here in the second quarter. But still a commanding lead up 18, the Bulldogs. Kaylin Trong drives to the right, looks for Ejim down low. She puts up the layup. It's short. Tries to get the second chance, but it's poked away. Idaho State. Last touch by them. Kayla Sammons as well as Ivana Murillo in now. Putting in the height probably for the defense here on this inbounds. 2.4 seconds left. Two on the shot clock. Sierra Walker also in, coming in. Puts up the three. It's good. Sierra Walker. For her fourth point of the night. Checks in just. I'm liking the pace, uh, particularly in the second half. The, the way that Idaho picked it up made Gonzaga come out and have to shoot the threes, even though they want to get to the paint. The post players for Idaho and their guards are really fighting down low, and that's making it harder for Gonzaga to score down low like they did in the first quarter. Well, it's 24 points in the paint, 38 points in total for Gonzaga to Idaho State, 17. They're up here at the McCarthy Athletic Center, and you are watching the WCC Network on Stadium. We have some halftime activities going on. A couple of young Zags trying to get on maybe their future uniforms. But early on in this game, Zags up 38 to 17. Early thoughts from that, from that first half for you, Bria. Going into this game, Coach Jordan told me that Idaho State has good defense, so they're going to have to work as a team to get the shot. And they've been doing just that, as you saw in the last possession before halftime. Sierra came out and hit that three. 
Great job from the Zags on offense in the first quarter. 23 points, only allowing four from Idaho State. And 24 points in the paint, the big difference. 19 points off the bench for the Zags. We'll be back for more first half analysis and second half analysis after this. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Center where the Bulldogs have a 21 point lead at the half. Have some first half highlights here for you. Player of the first half definitely has to be Yvonne Ejim. 10 points, 5 for 10 shooting. And obviously, the key component of the Zags game plan in that first half, Bria. It's definitely defense and the way they're playing on offense is phenomenal. Ejim is will play a critical role this year down low and on defense, and she is impactful on the rebounds as well. Last year we saw in, in previous years for the Zags a dominant high-low game between the Worth twins. Um, Melody Kempton and Yvonne Ejim have done a good job tonight trying to imitate that, and Ejim 10 points from down low, part of that 24 paints points for the Zags. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. We'll be back for the second half after this.
38 to 17 lead at the McCarthy Athletic Center for the Bulldogs against the visiting Idaho State Bengals. Looking at some halftime stats, Zags almost doubling the amount of field goals made for the Idaho State Bengals and also shooting a bit more efficiently, 48% from the field for the Zags, 40% for the Bengals. And another shocking stat here, the Bengals have not gotten to the free throw line at all. So the Zags, despite shooting 60%, which is not great, at least they're getting to the line, right, Bria? Right, I gotta give it to the Zags though for staying out of foul trouble. The past couple of games they've been in foul early foul trouble, so the fact that they have stayed away from that and limit themselves, limit the Bengals getting to the free throw line, is just great. Zags also having active hands on defense, 15 points off turnovers. We've seen Abby O'Connor and the Trong twins just getting really aggressive up top here on defense. You gotta give it to Ejim, of course, and Michaela. They're just seeing, their players just seem to get in the mix and that creates the turnovers for them to get their second chances. Finally, points in the paint, Zags 24, Idaho State Bengals only with 10. As the Zags start to come out here for the second half, we'll be back for second half action. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Nearly ready for the second half of action here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Zags up 38 to 17 after the first half. And partly the reason for that, shutting down the three-pointer for Stefania Ors on the Bengals. 
shooting 0 for 3 from the three-point line, but 3 for 3 inside the three-point line. She also started off with those three threes and missed them, and then was able to get down low for a couple of shots around the basket, got her confidence up, and then was able to knock down a long two-pointer. See if she's able to progress in this second half to start hitting those three-pointers like we're used to seeing her. Most of these games. What's also surprising from Ors is that she has no rebounds in the game so far, and that she only needs three more to get 500 for her career, and that would make her the 15th player in ISU women's basketball history with at least a thousand points and 500 rebounds. So it's not impossible for her to get three rebounds in a in a half. So I have to not. keep track of that for the rest of this second half. Zags get us started here. Kaylee Trong, they'll start the same way they started the game. Kaylee Trong, Melody Kempton, Emery River Joge, Sierra Walker, and Abby O'Connor is Zags' first attempt at a high low. is off. Callie Bourne to Dora Golis. Into Smith. Looking for Ors now Golis. Golis also with four turnovers in that first half. So a lot of the weight of initiating the offense for the Bengals is put on her shoulders. Usually she's able to rack up some assists, but today only one assist to four turnovers. The Zags have been playing a man defense all game and has been doing pretty well at it. They just have to keep moving their feet to make sure they don't pick up those fouls. That one gets away from Virjoge, but she's fouled. She tried to get it back. It's going to be the third foul on Whitman early on in this third quarter. Still a lot of time to play here in this game. Idaho State down 21. They can definitely turn it around. Had a disappointing start to their game earlier this year against Park University. Disappointing, they were up about 15 at the half, but definitely felt like a program like Idaho State, they wanted to be dominating a little bit more against an NAIA school. Melody Kempton there gets a bucket for the Zags. First points of the second half for either team. Ors attempts her fourth three-pointer of the game. It's off, offensive rebound by Callie Bourne. Golis puts up another three. It's off as well. Walker pulls it in for the Zags. O'Connor looking for Kaylee Trong, but Whitman was there. And Abby O'Connor with the turnover. Easy points for Whitman. Zags got to pick it up. The Bengals are getting into it. They're starting this quarter off with a lot of momentum and energy. They're looking to make a comeback in this game. Zags appear to be sleepwalking out of halftime here. Definitely need a wake up call. Here's Sierra Walker for three. It's good. Two in a row for Sierra Walker after starting the game with a miss. Whitman from the corner, it's off. Rebounded by Kempton. Now Kaylee Trong pushes up the court quickly. Looking to penetrate, Virjoge knocks down Tallyborn, no fouls called. Bengals collapse into the key and get the block on Virjoge. Kaylin Trong will check in for Abby O'Connor. In that last possession, the Zags have to remember to always go up strong with every basket, whether you're, you think you're all the way open or not, or even if the players are shorter than you, you have to go up strong because the Bengals are here to play. joge has got two, at least a two-inch height advantage over anybody else on the court for the Bengals, but they're using that athleticism to get up there and block that shot. Foul on Callie Bourne there, and Bengals starting to – Stack up on the fouls here. Bourne and Sweeney and Smith with two fouls. Whitman with three. 
Melody Kempton finds Verjoge down low, and Otrogi will pick up her first foul. Wrapping up Verjoge. Zags, third inbounds in a row from the baseline now into Verjoge. Back out Kaylee Trong, thought about the three, drives baseline, kicks it to Kaylin Trong. Her three-pointer, short. Tip to Whitman by the Bengals. Now Callie Bourne the other way. Ors drives to the left, puts up the two. It's off, rebounded Whitman. Now Ors wide open for three, Tr opted not to take it. Whitman down low, left foot handed layup is up and good. And that's what the Zags do not want. You do not want Whitman to start firing up because when she starts getting hot, she brings the heat, she brings the energy. Almost said left foot there, it was a left hand. I, I'm glad it's not the left foot because if it was a left foot, we'd be playing soccer and we'd be out in the snow right now. Definitely happy we're in here in the McCarthy Athletic Center. Definitely happy. Kept in the Trong. Trong caught in the air, looking for Ejim. Turns it over, here's Bourne. Coach Seaton wants a foul called there. Not going to get out Tro or uh, Sweeney. Otrogi for three. It's good. Bengals slowly building back here. 18 point lead for the Zags. Ejim on the outside. It's going to be a foul called away from the ball. Trogi, her second. And here's the replay. Whitman finding Otrogi, who knocks down the long three. She just needs seven more to make 100 in her career for the Bengals. Kaylee Trong, out to Kaylin Trong. Thought about the three, now into Ejim. See if she can work her post magic. Gets a step before she puts the ball down. It's gonna be a travel called. Another turnover for the Zags here in the second half. That's three already. Callie Bourne kicks it to Otrogi. Now Whitman at the top of the key, 13 to shoot. Dribbles to the side, puts up the long range two. It's off. Kempton now on the floor to bring it in for the Zags. Now look at that, all of those bodies hitting the floor. You see Idaho State bench standing up. That's what you want to get your team back in the game. You want sacrifices with your body, with, your, with everything. It's gonna be a jump ball there. Possession stays with the Bengals. Whitman out to Bourne now. Sweeney, guarded by Salenbein. Ellie Smith to Bourne, thought about the three. Now on Kempton, 11 to shoot. Bengals not able to find an opening on this possession. Puts up the long two, rebound Kalen Trong. Good defense from the Zags. Great defense from the Zags. Everybody staying with their man, switching when need to. Great defense from the Zags. Kalen Trong now goes to the left, and it's going to be a foul called against Ejim, picking up her second. Ejim's been quiet in this third quarter. Zags start to press once again. Here's Callie Bourne, guarded by Ejim. Lily Bevo in for the Bengals, her first tick of the night. Cuts inside, finds the opening, puts up the layup. It's off, rebounded by Kempton. Bevo with some fresh legs now for the Bengals. See if she can make an impact as Bree Salenbein gets down low for the layup. We always talk about how Bree will be a three-point three threat, but we don't talk about how she is also able to get to the basket and has great size. Salenbein makes it nine Zags now who have scored. 
Everybody except for, for Joe Gay. Let's touch the four, and there's the three from Sweeney. Both teams going back and forth in this third quarter. And really, since the end of that first quarter, it's been a pretty even game. Definitely so. The Zags just got their advantage in the first quarter. Kayla Williams held there. Foul on Bourne. Bourne picks up her third. Zags lead 45 to 27. 408 left in the third quarter. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Back here at the McCarthy Athletic Center, where the Zags have an 18 point lead against the Idaho State Bengals. 409 left in the third quarter. Zags getting pulled into a more competitive game in the second and third quarters. In the first quarter, we had a 19 point blowout. Idaho State was almost shut out, only four points. But since then, it's been a 23 to 22 point game. Idaho State actually leading. It's almost like they had a warm up from the ride outside or something. And now that they're warm, they're giving it to us. There it is. Kayla Williams will shoot two here coming out of the timeout. First free throw is good. Kayla Williams' second free throw as well is good. And one of the players maybe that Idaho State would have liked to have had in that first quarter that they could have just gone to for an easy bucket, Diaba Canate, the redshirt junior out of Paris, France, and French national team participant. She's been missing early in this season and was a crucial part in their team last year. Definitely would have liked to have her in the first quarter to get their offense going with a couple buckets. Golis, her three-pointer is short. Zags get the rebound going the other way now. Kaylin Trong going left, finds Michaela Williams. Now Virjoge coming, set a screen. Ejim doesn't have any options. Now is Williams, guarded by Golis, five to shoot for Virjoge. Now Salambein, two to shoot. One, doesn't get the shot up, looks for Virjoge inside. And that's gonna be a shot clock violation forced by the Bengals. Good job to the Bengals moving their feet, making it hard for the Zags to score on that last possession. Or to even get a look. Sierra Walker and Abby O'Connor will check in for the Zags. Williams and Salambein will get a rest. Bourne now bringing it up the court for the Bengals. Drives left on Verjoge, puts up the layup high off the glass. It's off, but a foul called against a 6-5 redshirt senior out of Romania. 
that drive is something that I expected to see more from Bourne this game. She's a strong left-hand driver, so we'll see if she'll show us a little bit more of that at the rest of this quarter and then some more in the fourth. Bourne first free throws off. We talked about the Zag team missing their three most important players from last year. Second free throw from Bourne is off the back iron again, rebounded by Verjoge. This Bengals team returning almost all of their production from last year, except for Delaney Moore, who's now at one of their grad assistants. She had a year of eligibility as Idaho State draws the offensive foul. But Delaney Moore had a year of eligibility, just couldn't play due to injuries and spending her first year on the coaching staff. So it's good to have consistent faces in the locker room for this Bengals team. Tally Bourne down low for Ellie Smith. 13, Ellie Smith. And Smith getting involved now. The Bengals have had those backdoor cuts, op cuts open all game long, but they're just not able to find them and knock them down. Hollingsworth, Kalen Trong. Hollingsworth checking in last dead ball for the Zags. Here's O'Connor. Hollingsworth thought about the three. Into Verjoge, back out to Connor. Her three-pointer is off. Rebounded by Bourne. Bourne with their sixth rebound now. And a foul is going to be called against the Bengals. Ellie Smith. It's actually going to be called against Oars. Her second. Another foul called now. It's going to be on Oars. And Zags are going to shoot three players in with three fouls for the Bengals. Whitman, Bourne, and Oars. I'm a little surprised by that last call. There's been a fight down low between the post players all game long. But that's the first time they've actually caught something for it. Maybe a little bit weaker than the jostling we've seen down there earlier on, earlier on in this game. Ejen's been getting a lot of contact in that first half. She just rolled it off. Been able to finish. Long three-pointer from Bourne is off. Kaylee Trong going to push it up the court from the Zags. Let's her teammates recover now. For Joge, in down low to Hollingsworth. Beautiful, and that's what she wants. Nice lob pass entry into your post player who can just make the easy finish at the room. For Joge having a nice view of the whole court, able to find Hollingsworth over the Bengals defenders. Now Whitman for three from the corner. It's off, rebounded by O'Connor. She'll push it the other way. Switch sides. Kaylee Trong got Callie Bourne in the air. Now Verjoge. 15 to shoot for Trong. Verjoge in the post. Out to O'Connor. Walker for three. It's good. Sierra Walker is heating up in the kennel tonight. Three threes for her so far. Yes, Sierra Walker is getting hot in here, and that's how we like it since it's cold outside. Trogi. They had beautiful ball movement that just left her wide open on the wing. Well, Trogi trying to respond. The three-pointer is off. Coming the other way now, Zag's drawing another foul. It's going to be called on Old Trogi. Her third as well. Mont Highbends going to check in for the Zags for Eliza Hollingsworth. Kaylee's first free throw is good. Second free throw is good as well. Zags starting to build on this lead. 25 points now. 
30 seconds left, or 18 seconds left in this third quarter. Last shot for the Bengals. Golis guarded by Walker. Now switch for Joge. Six to shoot. Pulls up from deep for three. It's off. Poked away by the Zags. Kaylee Trong tries to get the shot off. She's fouled. Now, will this be a shooting foul? Because Trong was trying to get off the half-court shot. The refs will meet at half-court to talk about it. A foul was called. Let's see. Play is going to be under review here. So Verjoge picks it up. Golis, not sure if that was an intentional foul or just trying to poke at the ball, but there was definitely time on the clock there. Didn't quite see if Kaylee was going up for the shot there. So I think that might be another debate. Only about four tenths of a second, so Zag is going to be hoping they can get to the free throw line. Otherwise, it's going to be tough to get a shot off. Well, one thing we kind of picked up or noticed, I believe, is that if someone's going to take the half court or buzzer beater shot at the end, it's probably going to be one of the Trong twins. And Golis there, it's like reaching across the body of Trong, getting the ball. Kempton checking in the next chance. Looks like we're going to get the official ruling here. And it will be a foul on Golis. Eight tenths of a second on the clock for the Zags. So Kaylee Trong will shoot free throws here. Players now coming back on the court just for less than a second of play. Zags 7-0 run over the last minute 35, making their five of their last seven field goals. First free throw for Trong is good. Also a scoring drought for Idaho State over the last 240, 0 for 4 in that time. Haley's second free throw is good, and yeah, it was going to be called for a shooting foul, so she'll shoot three. Three free ones for Kaylee Trong here at the end of the third quarter. And Zags will go into the fourth quarter leading by 28, 57 to 29 against the visiting Idaho State Bengals. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium.
start the fourth quarter. Kaylee Trong, same way they started, besides Ma on for Verjoga, and she'll get her first points of the game. That's 10 Zags now scoring so far tonight. Biggest lead of the night for the Zags, 30 points. Well, Trogi into Ors. Looking down low, she's going to be fouled. Not sure if it was Kaylee Trong or Abby O'Connor reaching in. It's going to be Kaylee Trong called for the foul. Her second. Stephania Ors will go to the line. Both of these teams last year having their season ended pretty similar, similarly, winning the conference tournament, winning the regular season championship as well. And then going on to lose in the first round, Zags were upset by Belmont. The Idaho State Bengals in a competitive game against the fourth ranked Kentucky Wildcats as a 13 seed, 63 to 71, only losing by nine. So they'll want to avenge that first round, maybe make it out of the first round this year. They're projected to win the big sky, so hopefully also trying to get that automatic bid from the conference tournament. Orr's driving down the baseline, kicks it to Golis, tipped away by a zag. Kaylin Chong and a check in for Kaylee. You have to love the smiles that the Chong twins share every time they're on the court. <laughs> I'm sure Kaylee doesn't want to come off, but I guess if, if it's her twin sister, I guess she can come off. I guess it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dora Golis, now Trogi. Ors driving to the basket, puts it up. Poked away by Ellie Smith is a rebound. Zags ball. We're seeing Ors drive more in this last quarter, which is looking all right for her, but she should have been doing it a little bit early in the game to contribute more to early success. And Ors just not her night shooting the ball. 0 for 4, but 3 for 5 from inside the arc. So trying to get her somehow. Number 12, Kelly Ford back in for Idaho State. Callie Bourne checking back in. It's going to be Ellie Smith checking out for the Bengals. Eight and a half left in this game now. Callie Bourne driving on Mott, finds a lane. Her layup is strong and off the backboard. Kempton with the rebound. Zags trying to get Mount Hybens involved in the offense. It would have been one more pass to the player with the better look at the post entry. As a Hollingsworth will come in here, Mount. Oars, Whitman. Bengals, see if they can get some momentum going into their next matchup. They're going to continue on a six game road trip. Spokane, Washington is their first stop. Next, they'll go to Missouri. Then we have a tournament just after the Thanksgiving holiday. Hollingsworth from the corner of the free throw line. It's off. Rebounded by the Bengals. Now, Bourne coming the other way. Stopped by Trong, Kalen Trong. Golis driving to the left. Out to Ors for three. It's short. Rebound by Kempton. It's loose still, actually. It's going to stay on this end of the court. Foul on Abby O'Connor. I'm actually going to call that foul on Hollingsworth, her first. Checking in for the Zags now, it's going to be Esther Little. Her first minutes of the game, the freshman out of England. 
Kayla Williams also checking in for the Zags. Anaya Bernard in for the Bengals. Her first minutes of the game. Callie Bourne down low for Whitman. It's tipped away by Trong. And now she has it coming the other way. Great defense from the Zags. You've seen how their players are communicating with each other, still saying switch, switch, stay here, don't move. And that's helping them secure this win tonight. Strong for three, it's off, rebounded by Whitman. Has some space in front of her, fast break for the Bengals. Drives and takes it herself. Layup is off, rebounded by Michaela Williams. She had options in either corner to kick it to there. Opted to take it herself. Like, go ahead, go ahead. Like Whitman's energy, she just has to keep her head and realize the best decisions. Whitman. Coming alive here in this fourth quarter. Getting the steal and the easy layup on the other end of the court. Definitely showing off her athletic ability, getting those steals and breaking it back down. Just a little. It's Michaela Williams. Over to Kempton. Has Hollingsworth down low. Out to Little. Now Trong, guarded by Anaya. Three-pointer is good. Kaylin Trong hits one from deep. Her second of the night. And there goes that exceptional, except, exceptional shooting we were speaking about earlier. Sweeney, Otrogi into Bourne. It's me off. Ellie Smith, Yvonne Ejim will check in for the Zags. Here it is again. Kaylin Trong. Shot clock winding down, just puts it up casually. Her signature <laughs> ET. <laughs> Kaylin Trong bringing it up the court now. Screen from Ejim. No switch, but a foul is going to be called on Ejim. That's going to be her fourth foul. Ejim. One more and she'll be done for the night, but Zags luckily securing the win probably at this point. 30 point lead, 450 left in the fourth quarter. Sweeney to Smith. Bengals swinging around the outside, Orr's driving, puts it up with the right hand, it's good. Orr's driving strong is really, really well. They would have need more help to kind of crash down on her driving to not let that happen. The second time the Bengals have been able to steal around the perimeter for the Zags, but good job Esther getting it back. Kaylin Trong drives right on Bourne. Her layup is off, foul called. Beyond Callie Bourne. Actually, Ellie Smith picks up her third foul. Zags up 62 to 34 with 406 left in the fourth quarter. You're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Thanks. Her free throws are good. Zags picking it up on the charity stripe tonight. 71% after those two. Back up to about their average. Active hands here. Zags get the turnover. Salambine on the ground. It's going to be a jump ball. Maybe she wanted a foul. Great defense from freshman Esther Little. She was all over in front of um, Sweeney. Jordan Sweeney now off the inbound. Esther Little, kick ball. She's been active in the little amount of time. She's had only three minutes on the court, but I feel like we've called her name almost every possession. It's ways to be effective without scoring, for sure. Ellie Smith now. Down low, puts up the layup, goes in and out. Unlucky for Smith. Great job by Bree to be that help, but stand straight up to not, dro dro uh, to not draw the foul. Foul called there. Anaya Bernard picking up her first. Kaelin Trong will inbound. Finds Salambine down low, creates some room for herself and puts up the shot. Zags lead up to 32. A born getting open for three. She hits it. That was a great ball movement. You saw when they swung it to the Opposite corner from Bourne, everybody crashed into the paint, leading that open side for her to get that open look. Bengals have had that quick passing around the perimeter, but they haven't really been able to find the open looks. The Zags defense has contained them pretty well, I'd say. Ejim to Trong. Nine to shoot now for the Zags, trying to clear the floor. Hollingsworth gonna set a screen, four to shoot, pulls up for three, it's good! <laughs> Kaylin Trong, she's not afraid to pull up out of nowhere. Three threes for her tonight now. And after that amazing drive, that's why the Trongs are so big. They can drive to the basket, they can pull up and make the shots. It's no easy way to guard them. Dora Golis now top of the key for the Bengals. Or to shoot for Ors, puts up the shot. Long two is good. Substitution timeout now to be called. Lily Bevo going to check in for the Bengals. It's going to be I guess we're going to take a timeout here. 30 point lead for the Zags. And on the, we're gonna get Kayla Sammons on the court as well for the Bengals. Zags leading 69 to 39. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium.
Zags up 30 here in what we thought was going to be a pretty close game. And we've had a, a tightly contested game over the last three quarters. But the Zags breaking away in that first by a 19-point difference. It wasn't just an offensive explosion, a defensive explosion as well, only allowing four points. Here's Esther Little, finds herself open on the outside. Salenbein. Kaylin Trong. Three Salenbein. Three to shoot for her. She's going to have to pull it. Gets the shot off, off the backboard. It's going to be a shot clock violation. Second one of the night on, called on the Zags. Looking forward for the Bengals. They're going to continue their road trip at Missouri on Sunday. And then they'll go for the Cancun Challenge Tournament where they'll play Toledo and UCF. Bevo driving. Almost gets the layup to go. It's off once again. Now Kalen Trong, Zags, looking at their schedule going forward, of course. It's the big one on the year, the, the one all the girls have had circled on their calendar against Stanford, Bria. Right, they are looking forward to that game, and they are excited for it. They want the competition to prove to themselves that they can do this. They can compete on a higher level. And they go to the Ra Rainbow Wahine Showcase in Honolulu. Salambine gets the shot off. Misses everything and goes out of bounds. They'll play Utah, Eastern Illinois, and Hawaii there. Esther Little now with the steal in the backcourt. One-on-one -on -one press against Golis. And the Zags are going to be able to hold the ball here to finish the game. No shot clock. Zags winning 69-39. to Bria. Who's your player of the game for the Zags tonight? My player of the game for the Zags tonight is Sierra Walker. She's had 10 points but was clutch, clutch shooting from the three-point line. And that's what the Zags have been wanting to see all year from her. And that's just only the beginning. Yeah, Idaho State Bengals starting to creep into it near the end of that, uh, near the end of a few quarters. But Sierra Walker hitting some big threes to snuff those little comebacks. A steal on the night, three for four from three-point range. So big night from her, and we're expecting her to continue to get hot from three throughout the season. Zags looking at the stat, shooting 52% from the field, 35% from three, and then on the other end of the floor, limiting the Bengals to 35% and 16%. What did you like from the Zags defense tonight, Bria? I like how they communicate. I like how they keep their hands up, their feet moving, their head on the swivel. They don't play still defense. They make sure that they are constantly causing a problem for somebody on the team. They don't make anything easy. And we saw Coach Craig Fortier on Wednesday practice emphasizing the Zags keep their hands up, keep the intensity. During some drills, he was he was there to make sure they were doing it, and today they showed they could they didn't need his help um, coaching them on the sideline. They could just do it on their own. Definitely could do it on their own. Coach Portier actually was jumping, almost looking like he was doing jumping jacks to show how their defense should be, and the Zags showed them that they got this. Trust us, coach. 37 bench points for the Zags as well led by Kaylin Trong with 11 and Yvonne Ejim with 10. Zags move to 3-0 on the season as they look forward to the defending national champions Stanford Cardinals on Sunday. 69-39 is the final score here against the Idaho State Bengals. It's been Nazar Wad and Bria Cade. You've been watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. Have a great night.